Hello YouTube and welcome back to Let's Play Balloon Star Defense 5 Deluxe Edition. In this episode we're going to be going to a stage that I do not like almost as much as I do not like the last stage we went to, which I already forgot which one, right, Lightning Star. Uh, downstream is the stage that we're going to this time and I just, it's another one that it, it's hard for me to, to pass. <laughs> and since we got the double Renga in the last episode, we shall now use it and see how effective it is, which is pretty effective, especially here when there's, you know, two lanes that they're coming down. Um, the thing that makes this track so hard is that it's two streams, or two paths, that uh, come down and they both split, so again, I'm trying to uh, defeat them all before they split. But then, there's a lot of open grass area to place towers here, but they're not really close to the track at all, so... It's the only towers you should put there are like uh, snipers or mortars or dartling guns, um, maybe banana farms. But then the track is right here next to the water um, and really close, like you know, in the water, I guess. I missed that. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Great. Uh, you can put some buccaneers in the water, but really it's just right here or right here that you can place them because the track uh, gets in the way, and then there's some bits of land that aren't really much room for anything. Like, you can't put a banana farm there, or a, uh, it's called Monkey Village, uh, but you can obviously put a little um, boomerang thrower if you need to. Uh, now, oh no, um, now I'll just let that one go. I'm gonna go for the Bionic Boomer, which I know I've been doing a lot recently, rather than the Glaive Ricochet, which is my favorite. Um, like, I, I like the Glaive Ricochet more than the Bionic Boomer, but, again, in this particular spot, you're just going up against um, a small area of balloons rather than a long stream of them, like if I was using it way at the bottom. And, again, I'm just going to let those go, uh, because I'm right about to get the Bionic Boomer, and there's only a few, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, so now I shouldn't be losing any. And also, a note on the double Ringa. When, like, I read the description that it shoots two boomerangs instead of one. I was expecting it to shoot it off, um, uh, a, not asymmetrically, but symmetrically. Uh, just, like, flipped across an axis. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but, like, if one shoots out to the right, the other would shoot out to the left, rather than the way it is where it's just a little more to the side, I guess. Which is still useful, but... Um, just because if you know me, I, I like that little OCD tendency. So it would have been nice if it was um, on both sides rather than just a little more to the side. And yeah, it's still useful, so not much of a complaint. Um, now, as I was saying, also the Buccaneer is very useful, I guess, uh, because there's water and the Buccaneer is always nice. So I will try to use one or maybe two. Uh, and again, you've always got to make sure you have a lead buster and a camo detection. And both of them need to be pretty good, but they don't have to be your entire uh, attack force, I guess. Because there's only three or four rounds that have camo, and there are quite a bit of lead. But my Bionic Boomer can take care of that anyways. Um, so, my bunk Monkey Buccaneer will be my camo detection, because with Crow's Nest it can detect camo. Um, and then with the destroyer, it's just really awesome. So that should get all the camo balloons. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, you can use sniper monkeys here a lot, or well, because there's a lot of room off to the side, not near the track. So I'm going to use one or two snipers to deal with the Moabs, because while the Bionic Boomer and the destroyer are pretty good, um, I'm still not entirely confident in their ability to pop the Moab. Uh, and the snipers are pretty good at pumping Moabs, especially if you have a Bionic Boomer and Destroyer backing them up. Um, you guys remember the sniper's problem, like their weakness is large groups of balloons, and the Bionic Boomer and Destroyer have a high enough attack rate and pierce rate um, to get through those uh, multi-groups of balloons quickly. But then their weakness is really like the Moabs, because they have so much layer Edge to them. Like, there's so much um, popping 
that you need to do, I guess. So many times you need to hit them, is what I'm saying. Uh, and they do have good fire uh, attack rate, which is good. Um, but they're a little bit more for the piercing. Well, no, they they are good for quick attack rate. I don't know what I was worried about, but either way, now that I have the destroyer, um, well, actually, I could save up and show you the aircraft carrier. That's twelve thousand, almost thirteen thousand. Um, rapidly launches monkey ace pilots that strafe the aerial threats. I might show you that in um, a sandbox mode or something, uh, just so they don't have to worry about saving up that much money. Which, again, I probably could have used a banana farm to save up that much money. Um, but anyways, I'm going to use a sniper way off in the corner, just because. And they're, like I think I've said it before, they're one of the most expensive uh, towers, mostly because of their left side upgrades, that the second upgrade's already almost 2,000, which is quite a bit. Um, and their right side third upgrade is 3,000, pretty much. Uh, and again, I think the first one was like 500 or 800. I wasn't paying attention. Um, well, it shouldn't be 800 because then it'd sell for a lot more. Um, you, you don't sell them for the exact price that you paid. You I think it's like a three-fourths or four-fifths difference. Um, but there is a premium upgrade that you can get so that you can sell towers for the exact price that you uh, bought them for. So if you pay 200, you can sell them for 200 rather than like 160. Um, and I th I'm going to get that eventually, but again, the premium premium upgrades cost so much, that it's going to take a while for me to save up to that. I mean, it took me like, what, 10 episodes, I think, to save up for the, um, it's called Double Ranga, which actually brings me to my next thought. thought. Um, what should I save up my money for? My monkey money. Um, if you, I'll go through the premium upgrades at the end of this episode, uh, just like looking at them, and then if there's one that you want me to save up for, then just let me know in the comments. Uh, or if you already know that you want me to do a specialty building or show off some of the special agents, which I will soon, um, in a couple episodes, um, then I'll show those off. Because there's a couple uh, round or maps coming up that I really do have some trouble with, because uh, I don't play them very often. I usually play the ones that I know I can beat, um, but there are some harder tracks that I'm going to use some special agents for, just so that I can, uh, well, I'll explain it more later. Uh, right now, I've got 2,000 money, and the next upgrade is 6,000. It's ridiculously expensive, even though it is ridiculously effective. Um, let's see, let's see should be good with this setup for a while, because the Bionic Boomer with the double Renga and the specialty building is very effective. Uh, because the double Renga basically doubles its popping power, or, um, yeah, popping power, I guess you would say, and then the, uh, what's it called, the specialty building makes sure that it uses just about all of its popping power because of what it does, I guess. Um, although something that I just thought of is that I'd like to get the Dreadnought, um, what's it called, uh, premium upgrade, because that means instead of the darts that it shoots out, it'll shoot out, uh, cannonballs, which can pop lead, which makes the, um, the destroyer a really powerful tower, because then it'll be able to pop all the balloon types, because the, something good, if you're gonna do, uh, hard mode, or even medium, is you need to be able to pop camo lead, and a lot of com camo lead. So having just a sniper that can pop camo lead with the right upgrades, um, it's not exactly the best, because it can't pop big groups of them. Um, Bionic Boomer, technically if you upgrade it all the way on the left, like not the Bionic Boomer, if you get the Glaive Lord, that can pop camo lead, and it's pretty good but it is really expensive, so uh, you can probably afford it by the time the camo lead comes up, but it's usually better to try something else a little cheaper. Uh, so with the destroyer, if you were to go past the crow's nest up to the cannon ship, I think it is, um, where it gets a cannon on the ship, if 
that wasn't already clear. Uh, now I'm going to lose some. Uh, yeah, I should survive that. Wow, that took a whole bunch more than I thought it would. Um, okay, I'm going to need more defenses. I'm about to lose, aren't I? Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can continue. Yes, I can. Okay. That was bad. I should have increased my defenses. Uh, and I wasn't really paying attention to him because I was talking. Um, but that's no excuse. Okay, so that should be fine now. Um, having two more destroyers, I should definitely get them all. Um, well, okay, most of them. <laughs> okay, uh, can I get another sniper? Just in case. Um, what was I saying? Right. The destroyer is pretty good because the um, if you had the dreadnought, then it'd be firing really fast with the ability to pop lead and camo, so that's very effective. Uh, but then also if you go to the right side, there's a cannon ship, so that it fires a cannonball or a bomb really um, every couple seconds. Or I don't know how fast it is, but it fires it pretty well, and that way you would be able to. Uh, what's it called? Uh, hold on. Switch this one to first, and switch this one to strongest. Uh, so that's targeting the Moabs more. But, anyways, uh, cannon ship, it is pretty good, but if you have the dreadnought, then the destroyer is much better. Uh, what else? The monkeys, uh, not the monkeys, the wizard monkeys, um, they're really good at being able to pop all balloon types because of their camo detection with their monkey sense. And then their fireball tower, or not fireball tower, just fireball ability, and then also their chain lightning, or dragon's breath. Uh, all three of those are also good against lead. Uh, Super Monkey, even though it is really good at popping everything, um, it doesn't have camo detection unless you buy its specialty building, which gives it camo detection if you upgrade its range. Um, so the Super Monkey can't pop everything unless you have the specialty building or a mortar tower with the signal flare, or the monkey village to give it camo detection. Uh, dartling gun can pop everything if you give it the right upgrades. The bluntonium dart lets it pop everything. It already has camo detection, so you just need the the bluntonium darts or the laser or the ray of doom, the fourth tier left side upgrade, uh, to be able to pop lead, or the bluntonium, uh, whichever one. Man, wow, again, I really need to pay more attention, <laughs> and I can't, ah, oh, no, I wasn't even saving it, dang it, um, hmm, well, okay, I'm going to stop that for now, uh, <laughs> uh so I'll look at the deluxe upgrades, uh, triple lives, uh, who wants nine lives when you can have hundreds? Right, because I can't. Anyways, uh, now start easy games with 600 lives, medium with 450, and hard with 300. Which would have been nice <laughs> if I had that so I didn't lose. Uh, Dreadnought, do word, flaming cannibals, monkey buccaneers figure out they should put these burning lumps of lead into their cans instead of darts. This enhanced attack can pop frozen and lead balloons. Uh, Splody darts, this awesome upgrade makes dart monkeys' darts explode on their last pop, letting them pop heaps more stuff than normal. Bigger beacons. With bigger beacons, each monkey village has a massively increased range of influence. Monkey Tycoon. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Now you can sell your towers for 100% of what you paid for them, including all upgrades. Hotter cooldowns. Monkey engineers have everything working faster, giving you a 30% reduction in cooldown times for those epic tier 4 activated abilities. Combine this with village energy beacons for an amazing 50% reduction. Ninja Monkey Success. All boss balloons, Moab, BFB, ZOMG, Enter... Enter play with 50% health. Gotta love all those. All things ninja. Uh, monkey farmers reveal organic banana breakthrough. These bananas are so healthy that they give you plus one life per upgrade level. Per round. That's nice. Uh, attack Awesomizer. Sharper than sharp. Attack towers. Spike factory spiked. Spikes. Spike factory spikes. Bloomberry bushes and road spikes now pop twice as much as before. Cooking pineapples brings out the flavor, and reduces the countdown on explosions. Now pineapples will explode right after being placed, no more guessing and missing. 
makes those awesome tornadoes more awesomer. Now all to tornadoes spawn three small copies of themselves, each of which can send balloons flying back to an entrance. Alright, so those are all the upgrades, and of course I didn't read the double ring, so I already got it, but I'll read it anyways. The new double ring technique allows all of your boomerang throwers to hurl two boomerangs instead of one. Alright, so these are all the deluxe upgrades. Um, obviously you can tell that this one's a lot more expensive than this one. Um, and this one, especially that one. That's only 600, that's really cheap. Okay, uh, but I never use pineapples, which is why I never uh, get that one. So, uh, leave a comment down below which one you want me to get. I'm thinking triple lives would have been great to have already. <laughs> Dreadnought would be really great because it's cheap and effective. Splody darts I never really use. Bigger beacons it's nice, but again, I don't really use monkey villages that much. And, you know, just leave a comment down below of what you want. Or, if you want, you can leave a comment saying which specialty building you'd like me to use. The dart training facility, which after its third one, you get one free dart monkey to start, and every 10 round, attack research center, every second shot from attack tower has extra pierce. Boomerang dojo already have, bombing range, bomb towers can pop black and zebra balloons, mage spire adds new additional magic bolt attacks that seek out its target. Ice fortress, uh, ice towers can freeze white and zebra balloons, ninja academy creates a shadow double of the ninja monkey for short duration, spikes are us, generates one free red spike pile every round, mortar emplacement, uh, all balloons hit by mortars are stunned briefly, ace, pri ace private hangar, aces get fast firing forward gunners to add to their firepower, very effective, pirate cove, all ships detect camo, crow's, next, crow's nest grants detection to nearby towers, also very effective, glue supply depot, popped balloons leave glue on the track, I've never actually used that. Uh, dartling ammo dump. Uh, dartling gunners can lock their attacks to a fixed position. Very useful. Rifle range. Every second shot does plus one damage. Not entirely sure what that means, but I uh, kind of already know. Anyways, uh, super monkey lair. Super eyes can detect camo. Engineers workshop. Nail gun and turrets can pop lead and frozen. Alice custom chippers. Any blooms that emerge are dazed and slowed briefly. Okay, so those are all the special effects of the specialty buildings. And... Special agents... Alright, I'll read those. Watermelon Spitter. This attack chipmunk fills his cheeks with watermelon, then attacks with a rapid fire burst of sharp seeds. Monkey Farmer. Tired of picking up all those bananas yourself? So so is this guy, but at least he's paid to do it. Farmer will auto-gather all bananas in his radius, so you don't have to. Mad Snowman. He is freezing cold and has a bad attitude to match. Rapidly throws snowballs that pop balloons once before freezing them. For better or worse, this agent melts after 10 seconds in the game. Know where to float your boat? Smart monkeys know they can place a portable lake on land, allowing any water unit to be deployed within its waters. And then there's the pontoon. Place almost any land tower on water with the pontoon. Deploy the pontoon on water, then place your land tower on top. Tribal turtle can live on land or water. Throw spears and coconuts. Coconuts do extra damage to ceramic balloons and can pop frozen and lead balloons. So their balloon today device, the apex of monkey tech, the otherworldly balloon today device gives you temporary control of their orbital strike satellite, whose beam destroys all balloon, all balloons, and does big damage to Moab class balloons. Meerkat spy has no attack, but instead uses his super keen senses to spot camo balloons, granting camo detection for all towers within his radius. Beekeeper, the special agent has a hive. This special agent has a hive of angry bees that zip to their targets and sting balloons until all layers are popped. Stingers can't get through lead or ice, but regrow balloons beware. Plant this fast-growing bloom killer right on the track. Loses one thorn for each bloom popped, but grows five thorns between each round, up to two hundred. You protect it; it'll protect you. And then there's the Super Monkey Storm. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a squadron of flying, super-powered, laser-beaming monkeys who destroy every single balloon on screen and do big damage to more class balloons. Angry Squirrel, armed with sharp acorns, this special agent goes berserk when balloons leak. For a few seconds, he attacks super fast, can spot camo and pop lead. So those are all the special agents. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see me use those. And as you can tell, it costs monkey money, and I only have 70. So either pick one that's less than 70, or wait for me to get more monkey money by actually beating the stage that I just lost to. Which was so ridiculous, because I had extra money from the continue, I should have just used more money and just... Okay, uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.